Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a sketcher strap so that you can carry a bunch of tools and supplies with you on your sketchbook. These will slide right over your sketchbook and will keep your tools handy so you don't have to have an extra bag or whatnot. Um, I got the idea because I saw these sold at Cheap Joe's and they're made, they're thicker, they're made of black elastic, but I love the idea and I thought, oh, well, yeah, people could buy them, I could buy one, but I have elastic, so I figured why not give this a try? and this will have loops all the way around on all the sides so that you could put more things if you wanted to. You could even put like a watercolor palette in there if you wanted to. You can make it to fit whatever you have that you want to carry. You can even put your cell phone in one of these straps if you want to. So um, without further ado, let's get to it. Let's use my Ohuhu uh, sketchbook here. I could do a marker strap. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your elastic. Now I happen to have two kinds of elastics that are just slightly different. I've got one that's just a, like a wee bit larger and I think these are like two dollars a package. I actually think I paid 99 cents a, a package of I don't know how many yards are in there. Do I have knife paper? I don't know. It's from like the, the sewing store. So what you want to do is you want to wrap around whatever sketchbook you want to use, whichever way you want to go. It does not matter. You're going to not stretch it but you are going to wrap the bottom layer around and you are going to snip it right where it meets. So see, I'm going to cut it right here. It, what, it should I zoom in a little bit? I need to zoom in a little bit. So right where it meets. So you don't have any excess. Because what we want, we want this to have a little bit of stretch to it. So we don't want to, um, when we sew it, we'll be overlapping that and it'll be a little stretchy. And then when you put stuff in it, it'll make it tighter too. So you don't want to have it too tight and not be able to fit anything in it. So that's what you want to do. And then you're going to cut another piece of elastic, either the same size or it could be smaller. It doesn't really matter. I think I bet the cheap Joe's one is really wide. I think theirs is like two inches wide, so you know it's going to be stronger. But I'm using what I have, right? Um, so then I'm going to trim this one here to be the same length. Actually, let's see how long this one is because if I don't have to waste anything, this one's a little bit closer. So our top piece is going to be the exact same length. Okay, and now. All we have to do is go over to the sewing machine and stitch little gaps, however big we want them. All right, you're seeing a very close-up to my sewing machine. Uh, it's very awkward to film over here, but I've got my the elastic lined up. So keep in mind that you're going to be overlapping the last, um, pay no attention to my inky fingers, you're going to be overlapping probably the last um, three quarters of an inch there. So don't put any, any, um, like loops really close to that. So I'm going to come over at least an inch. And I've got my sewing machine set on a straight stitch. I'm going to, oops, I got to thread my needle. All right, so, whoops, and there she goes on the floor. This is why I don't do sewing tutorials. Okay, so we're gonna line this up so we get the little one on top of the big one, or it doesn't really matter, they can be the same size, but just line up your ends. And then I'm going to put a, I'm gonna make a divider, so put my needle in. I'm going to sew all the way across the two, the two strips. Now I'm going to go backwards over that entire thing. I'm using a straight stitch and then I'm going to go forwards and backwards just to lock it. Okay, so there's um, one side of our first little pocket. So let's see, make sure your needle is out of the out of the elastic. You're going to lift up the presser foot and you're going to move it down a little bit. Okay, just kind of tuck that thread back and out of the way. You know, you don't need to cut it every time. I wouldn't cut it till you're about done. Um, and then I'm going to put uh, another one about an inch inch away. Put the uh, string back in. Put the needle back in, I mean. We're going to sew down. We're going to sew back. We're going to just do forward and backward a little bit. I'm using a pretty big stitch. I mean, you could use a smaller stitch if, if you want. And go another, another smaller one. You're just going to carry on like this until you have all the, uh, all the stitches you want. Oh, make sure that your thread is underneath your presser foot. Going through the hole there. There we go. 
I always put it into the fabric before you start sewing. That backwards and forwards at the end, that just locks your stitch. All right, now I think I'll put a bigger gap in case there's something larger I wanna bring, or maybe I wanna put a couple, you can always put several markers or things together or ruler or I don't know, whatever, whatever smaller thing you have that could go in there. Your cell phone. You know, you could, that could be big enough to stick your cell phone on if you're going out to sketch and you don't want to, you don't have any pockets or whatever because you're a girl or a woman and you're wearing a dress and there's never good pockets. Or if you're a guy wearing a dress. Hey, I don't judge. You do you. If you're in a non-pocketed outfit. also like about the um about the top elastic I've already I went off a little bit the top elastic being a little bit wider is that if you you know you, if you don't have it centered perfectly it doesn't really matter it's not going to go off off the rails so okay do this till you get to the end and then we'll meet back up when we're when we've got this all gusset when we've got all these dividers sewn but see and you're gonna have this like loose thread don't worry about that right now okay I thought this shot might be a little bit better so I moved the camera uh, yeah. move it over a bit. See, we've got our row of little dividers that we made. I should have used a contrasting thread. I'm awful at this. Um, so yeah, we'll move it over a little bit. We're going to keep on sewing down here. Needle in. Sew forward, reverse. Oops, I didn't get all the way to the bottom, so I'm going to do that again. I know I'm probably a little bit over the top with my locking stitches, but you know, I'll do a little bit of a wider one here, cause who knows? Maybe I want to put a wide marker in there. I don't know. All right, we're making our last little pocket here. All right, so now, what we have here, we've got our strip of of our um, little pockets, what do you, whatever you want to call it. So now what we're going to do is we are going to flip it over and we're going to, what I like to do is kind of interweave the ends like that. You don't have to do it like that, but that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm just going to stitch over the entire thing, but I'm going to switch my stitch. I'm going to switch to a zigzag stitch. I'm going to still keep it wide, but I'm switching all the way over to my widest zigzag stitch. So there's a little dial on my, on my um, sewing machine. Actually, I can show you that. It's this little dial right there. So I was over on one. I know I have such a janky machine. <laughs> so I'm going to the widest to five. Okay. So we're going to go back down to where you can see. All right. So we've got our ends. So I've got it. So the, um, do I have it? I guess they look about the same on either side. I was gonna say, I have it so the nicest side is facing out, doesn't really matter. Um, or I mean, I guess you could, I don't think it matters. It's gonna look about the same either way. I'm just gonna, gonna uh, make sure your loop isn't twisted. See, I've got this, uh, this not a Mobius strip. It's not, it's just a loop. And then I am gonna stitch over all of these. Make sure your thread is in there and tucked back. I have not cut anything. So if it's too difficult to deal with that string, you can just, you can snip it. Let's see, which end of this is coming from? You know what, I am gonna snip it because it is kind of in the way. Get that back there, you can get back there. Okay, so just uh, make sure that when you sew it, you're not, you're getting through all the layers and you haven't twisted it. So here we go. We're gonna see how my needle is going to one side. All right, we are going to sew down. Ooh, that was a little rough. We're gonna go back. do this a couple times because I think my machine it did stick a stitch. Ooh, get in there. We're having a little having a little whoops. Yeah, never try to remove the fabric if you're oh 
Oh, we are stuck for some reason. Get out of there. I don't know what happened. Right, let's try that again. I feel like I got a little jam. Hopefully the first one, the first time we did it, did we won perfectly, but yeah, basically you just need to sew through the entire, maybe I'll sew it from that side. Maybe that'll work a little bit easier. Feed dogs are having a hard time grabbing the fabric. All right, I think that's probably enough. Turn my needle back to the start position again, just so the next time I use this, I won't have a zigzag stitch if I'm not paying attention. All right, so now we're gonna go back to the table because I could show you the trimming and all of that stuff over there a little bit more easily, but we've got a We've got a stretchy, stretchy loop here right now. So now we just need to trim off all of these loose threads because, you know, we didn't do that while we were sewing. We just kept on keeping on. This is tedious. I know, tedious to watch. We can kind of see everywhere we're trimming threads because the threads are going to be attached to where we start and stop each of our pockets. All right, we've got just about all of our threads trimmed. Oh my gosh, trimming the threads. Trimming the threads are, well, you'll know it. If your thing doesn't stretch, it's because you haven't trimmed, you trimmed your threads. So, uh, all right, let's slide her on. Now this actually will fit on my nine by 12 big watercolor sketchbooks as well. So I think having these in a couple different sizes would be a good idea. Oh, maybe we'll put it so our seams in the back. So it just looks a little bit nicer. Doesn't really matter, honestly, but. So it's not gonna be super snug at first, even though we did over, we did, you know, meet the elastic so that when we sewed over it, um, it would have a little bit of a stretch, but then once you start filling it up, it's gonna get nice and snug. And I thought I would just throw in a few markers here just to show you. Now, if you've got like smaller pens, you could double up. So if I took, like say I wanna bring a fountain pen and maybe a, a brush pen, I could put two in a container like that into a little loop like that. But uh, yeah, it's very customizable. If you know you're only using smaller pencils or, well, you could do like, um, let's grab a few pencils. You could put, a few, you could put like probably four pencils, three or four pencils in one of those slots that we made. You know, pretty, pretty easily. So make it however you want. I wouldn't make the, the, the pockets too close together though because then you limit what can fit if your pocket, if the, the things are too close together. Um, I definitely think three quarters of an inch to an inch if you're doing pencils, markers, uh, water brushes is about perfect because you just double up or triple up if you need to make them tighter. And then if you have a couple of these that are like an inch and a half, that's gonna be nice for those wide markers if you like to use those. And then if you have things like, you know, the, the Viva color sheets or even a full watercolor palette you can put in here. So, um, you know, make it, make it work for you is, is, you know, the moral of the story, the, the bottom line. And it's very quick and easy. And yeah, it's not a new idea, but, um, I was reminded of that when I saw one at Cheap Joe's and I thought, oh, I think I'm going to try to do something like that too. So all you need is some basic sewing elastic. A package of this was two bucks at the local sewing store. Actually, I think it was cheaper than that because I got it on Barden's for like 99 cents, but I think the regular price on these are like $2 and 20 cents and give you enough to make it, make a couple of these anyway. So there you have it. Thank you so, so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll try to help you out. And please give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you like inky fingers because I certainly have those today. Um, thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.